I remember going to the door and I remember just turning and, you know, I just did it. Like, I didn't question it. I'm, I'm sure I was scared out of my mind. You just, you just snap into it and you know you gotta do it. You know you're not gonna stop at that door because all your other brothers and sisters just went out, you know, so you gotta follow them. They ignored fear, secure in the knowledge that back home, an entire network was ready to put them back together after the fall. We were jumping for the president, for President Bush. We were doing like a whole airborne show. And I came down and, and I noticed that I was oscillating, so I was swinging back and forth. And, you know, once you see that, it's a problem. Especially if you oscillate up and now, you know, you come in. I landed on the tarmac, landed on my head first. And I woke up to the medics, you know, the whole shebang. And they said I had a concussion and, you know, I was throwing up and bleeding and all kinds of craziness after that. So when we came down, yeah, there's protocol on how to land properly, PLFs keep your feet and knees together. Does that happen? No, you, you come down and you hit that ground, you know, really, really hard. My unit was heavy, combat ready. You know, we were, we were ready to deploy in, in 18 hours and anywhere in the world. So that's all we did. You know, we were constantly training, constantly in the range, constantly jumping. Um, so my body got beaten down and now I'm feeling it. Now my lower back, I got three herniated discs, two mild, one fully blown. And both of my knees are starting to get painful now every day. In 2018, Jimmy Negron sought care at New York Harbor Healthcare System. The neurologist sent me up for cortisone shot. This was three months ago. I just got the call a couple days ago. And I told her, forget it, the pain is, it's there, but it's not there to the point like it was. I literally had to deal with that pain and almost come to the point of crying every day because I was in so much pain in the VA. They just said, we're on demand. We'll call you when we're ready to give you one shot, one shot to your back. I know it's not that easy, but you're telling me you couldn't fit me in for one shot. I'm in all this pain. In the summer of 2018, reports began to surface about an uncertain future for Brooklyn's VA hospital. We took those questions directly to New York Harbor Healthcare Director, Martina Peruda. It's really a, a mix of veterans from the Brooklyn area who come and use VA. Just through a cursory search, I was on Yelp and people review the VA and their number one complaint was about wait times. So wait times or access as it's often referred to is the ability for a veteran to get an appointment right. when he or she needs or wants that appointment. I'm happy to say that across New York Harbor at all of our sites, we don't have an access issue. A veteran can get an appointment when he or she wants. If they're not getting the service or turnaround that they feel they need, they need to let us know. When, when our veterans walk through, I am very confident that we have the staff yeah. and the quality of staff that we need to provide them the best care. So the reports of the New York Harborside VA facilities demise have been greatly exaggerated. Greatly exaggerated. We're here and we're here to stay. I served in, uh, in the United States Marine Corps from 2000 to 2005. I was engaged in Operation Iraqi Freedom 1 and 2. I injured my back as a result of uh, just getting knocked down from uh, something that happened in, uh, in, in Iraq. I was on the bottom of a pile of, of rubble and it was, a, it was an explosion that went off. And uh, as a result, I hurt my shoulder and, and my back. I lost hearing in my, uh, my left ear. I ended up making a claim. It took so long. You know, you're basically like a guy with a map. You don't know how to read this map because it's in a different language. So you start off like, I gotta ask somebody. You go to ask somebody. They tell you, you gotta go to this room. This room's like, we don't do this. You gotta go to that room. In 2014, critics charged the Veterans Health Administration with falsifying appointment records to create the impression of shorter access times and engaging in a pattern of negligence that in some cases led to veterans dying while waiting for treatment. Privatizing will help more people, more veterans get seen, I believe. You know, when you have any medical issues, the worst thing you can do with any of them is wait. And the veterans are stuck waiting. So I think that will help 
as far as the waiting process goes. The scandal has given birth to arguments that privatizing the VA system would deliver better care for veterans. Dr. Malloy, thanks so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Dr. Patrick Malloy, the executive chief of staff at New York Harbor Health, spent years working and teaching in the private sector before joining the hospital's leadership team. What would that mean in a Brooklyn context if Harbor was suddenly uh, privatized? So privatization means a lot of things to, uh, to different people, but if a patient were to go out into the private sector, I think what they would immediately find out is that things are, are a little bit more fragmented. They have to manage their care a, a little bit more than uh, what happens at the VA. Privatization, um, it, it can be politicized be, uh, because it, it's in the news right now and it's something, you're looking at the future of the VA. There are certain areas in the country where the veteran population is expanding quite a lot, where the current VA system cannot meet their needs. So for those facilities, for, to have the ability to work with the private sector it is a tremendous benefit. We're one VA in the country that we do not send a lot of patients out into the uh, private sector. Our, our mission is to uh, continue to provide the full scope of services. While the administrators of Brooklyn's VA hospital maintain they are well suited to care for Brooklyn's vets, nationally, the privatization debate still goes on. Despite what we might be hearing, our focus locally is on the veteran who comes to us and whatever his or her needs might be, we address them. So we focus on our community. The national picture is the national picture. How do you feel privatization, which is something we've been hearing a lot about with the entire VA system, would affect the folks here in Brooklyn? That's a national issue, Brian. Um, and. I try to stay out of the politics and what's going on nationally. Is privatization a path to making sure they get that at all, or do you want the things to stay firmly as they are? That's not my decision, Brian. My decision is to provide the care that I can right now, given the resources that I have. I'm a big fan of, of supporting veterans, but not victimizing them, not making them to be hurt, injured birds. Yeah, veterans definitely deserve equal treatment to every person that's here. Not better or worse, we deserve equal. I don't want to down anybody in the VA because they're all just doing their job and I get it. But, you know, I just feel like we shouldn't have to sing for our supper. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like they're not, they don't have a sense of urgency for us. We're a number. That's, that's the feeling you get, you're a number.